this uh, conference, Autism One, um, used to be owned pretty much by uh, Jeff Bradstreet. Uh, he was the main leading pioneer in, in this work. Uh, as some of you know, uh, three years ago, Jeff lectured here, and a week later he was raided by the FDA, and another week later he was found with a gunshot in his chest floating in a river. And those of you who are here from the FDA or from other more hidden government agencies, none of the things I will be lecturing about you will find in my office. You're welcome to raid my office as, as you have in the... As you have in the past, came the year 2000, I was one of the early people screaming that 80% of autistic children uh, really have Lyme disease as a cofactor in their illness, 80%. Um, and actually that number has gone up to near 100% uh, with the newer testing methods that, that we have. And so uh, today I will talk about the retroviruses and I believe that we found the deepest common denominator in what causes autism. And it's really a, an activation of what's called human endogenous retroviruses. And um, the, the reason why you haven't heard about it or why it's not as known as it should be is because the Jeff Bradstreet was onto the retroviruses, his work with GCMAF that was the antiretroviral agent. Everybody who has pursued that road has either lost their license, has been prosecuted heavily, or shut down. The laboratories that could make the diagnosis, such as uh, Judy Mikowitz, who is here in the audience and who's been my mentor, and I, I like to make the point by including the diagnosis and treatment of retroviral illness, we've made an incredible forward step in healing autistic children, and I really say healing. Why do I say that almost 100% of autistic kids have Lyme disease? Well, um, Lyme disease does not live in the blood. So if you look in the blood for Lyme disease, you will not find it. That's what medicine does. They're looking in places where it's not to show, to prove the point that it doesn't exist. What we did is because Lyme is in the brain in the kids, we use ultrasound and Marco Rogero was my teacher with that, and so was Jeff. We use ultrasound to chase the microbes out of the brain into the blood, and then we use ultrasound over the kidney to drive the microbes uh, from the blood through the kidney into the urine, and then we use ultrasound over the bladder to chase it into the final exit route, and then we collect the urine, and then we find that 98% of autistic kids have Lyme disease. <clears throat> and we thought we arrived at the deepest level, and then we found out through the work of Judy Mikowitz, um, who inspired me to keep looking deeper, and uh, that was not the deepest level, there's something deeper going on. Here's like a, a sample of a urine PCR test of an autistic girl that was declared by uh, a higher university in the US that she definitely does not have Lyme disease, yeah, based on some shitty testing that did looking for it in the blood. And this is what we find using the PCR testing. Um, we found Bartonella, Ehrlichia, and different types of Borrelia. So look for and treat Lyme and the co-infections. That's again, and then detoxing glyphosate. Yeah, so to get glyphosate out of the gut, we use a restore called Matrix Minerals from BioPure, it's a company in Seattle, that glyphosate uh, can be extracted from the tissues, even from the brain, by using these peat extracts that have humic acid and fulvic acid, and it's very important that you know that. The other one is the high dose of glycine. Yeah, glycine competes with glyphosate and knocks it off its binding sites in the system. This Chris Exley's study, new study here that showed uh, that uh, autistic kids have significantly more aluminum in the brain uh, than, than healthy neurotypical children. 
Um, and then everybody is focusing on where the aluminum comes from and focuses on the vaccines. That's all true. And Stephanie Senev taught me this largely the glyphosate that impairs the sulfate uh, creating mechanism, the most important molecule uh, with all the detox functions in the body is impaired by glyphosate. Then uh, this is the best article on the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi uh, destroys permanently alters about uh, one seventh of all the proteins in our body, uh, explaining why uh, children that are in, as a fetus exposed to Wi-Fi, um, why the mother, uh, and actually the, the fetus concentrates the radiation 20-fold uh, in the womb because of the membranes and the electric properties of everything. And uh, the radiation impairs the detox mechanisms in the fetus. And the fetus is born with an inability to detox aluminum from the vaccines, but also from the persistent contrails, as these things are called. OK. Now, what I'd like to say at the beginning, all of these factors that I mentioned so far are setting the child up to activate the retroviruses. And so I, I will introduce you into that. So first of all, uh, it's very well known in the research that there is a link between retroviral activity in the autistic children um, and autism. So that th there's a very, very strong link with that. The only reason it has not been pursued because all the labs have been closed that could make the diagnosis. So what are retroviruses? So here we go, yeah? So you know that DNA viruses, like the herpes viruses, they incorporate themselves directly into your DNA and from there they can get replicated or be silenced. Retroviruses incorporate themselves into the RNA that's, you know, so it goes, you know, DNA, RNA, and then proteins are manufactured, and they're producing your hormones and your building blocks of life. And so retroviruses incorporate themselves into the RNA and then activate an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, and then they reverse engineer themselves from there into your DNA. And once they're embedded in the DNA, they're there forever, and they need to be silenced by either methylation or acetylation. Those are the two, two big steps, the, the two different types of retroviruses that we'll talk about um, can infect the central nervous system and wreak havoc there. There is two kinds of retroviruses. The ones that you get like a flu from air, from the vaccines. Many of the retroviruses that we're exposed to are incorporated in our DNA, not all of them are bad, but many of them are. An important part that I think is going to come up um, is that the, the retrovirus, by incorporating themselves in you, they also can uh, tweak your own genome. And one of the papers that Judy gave me, one of them was fascinating to me because the MTHFR, you all know, right? Well. Ten years ago, we observed that we saw these kids with the MTHFR mutation, and, the, and then we'd say, well, you know, it must come from one of the parents, and it didn't. The, the parents had normal genes, both of both sides, but the kid had severely mutated, uh, severe snips on, on the genes, so there were de novo mutations, as they're called, and we were looking for an explanation, and there was a paper that Judy sent me that shows that the retroviruses can retro-engineer your, retrofit your DNA to fit them and actually creating the MTHFR mutation. And then the treatment does not become giving more methyl B12 and SEMe, but the treatment becomes then to silence that section of the DNA. And so we have several cases now where the MTHFR mutation disappeared <laughs> when we treated them for the retroviruses. So it's a much deeper level of treatment you know, that, that is offered there. ADHD has been linked to retrovirus hyperactivity, schizophrenia, inflammatory brain diseases, MS, huge number of papers on breast cancer, 
autoimmunity, diabetes type 1 and type 2. So the vaccine issue, there's certainly um, uh, just a highlighted part here, retroviral reverse transcriptate in attenuated live virus vaccines. So um, vi many of the vaccines are full of these viruses, uh, whether that's intentional or as a side effect, we don't know. I'm always assuming the worst. <laughs> um, last year, two beautiful studies came out on, on vaccine. First time, there was a cohort study, you know, a group of vaccinated children versus the un unvaccinated. The, un uh, the vaccinated group had 14 times the incidence of severe lifelong allergies and neurological disorders, 14 times. 